one rise, one set. And man or woman, young or old, it makes no difference. This is the real world, the home of the Wilderness Journal. And out here, hard work and a little luck, well that might just earn you one good chance. But remember, it's not likely you'll get more than one. Our world doesn't have a backspace, a do-over, a repeat button. Here on the journal, there's really no such thing as a timeout. The Wilderness Journal is underwritten by Eagle Valley Outfitters. Hunting or fishing, archery or firearm, boots, bullets, or bait casters, you can get it all at Eagle Valley Outfitters, M13 and Worth Road, Pinconning. And by Diamond Buck All Weather Camo. If you had a blind built with Diamond Buck Camo, you'd be waterproof, windproof, bug proof, and scent control. So ask yourself, where are you going to sit this season? That's Diamond Buck All Weather Camo and by Hopkins Trophy Whitetails in Sears, Michigan. At Hopkins, they know a successful hunt's about more than just pictures. They truly believe every hunter should live their own dream, even if they dream big. That's Hopkins Trophy Whitetails in Sears, Michigan. And by the Morgan Composting family of businesses, providing custom blended organic and soil treatments for everything from large scale agribusiness to homegrown gardens. That's Morgan Composting. We're working with nature. And by viewers like you, thank you. Well, hi friends, welcome to the program. A program that I should warn you is not exactly normal. No, <laughs> you see, Miss T and I were headed up to Esnagami Lodge last spring. Now, if you're a frequent flyer, you know that's one of our favorite places in the whole world to go. We fish there every chance we get, partially because Eric and Sue have become very good friends but it has a lot to do with the fact that they have some tremendous fishing as well. Well, you know, I gotta tell you though, we weren't really going the, to the lodge. We were headed to their new outpost camp out on the river. It's a fly-in kind of do-it-yourself outpost camp. And I was taking Dan Fox and Tim Somerville down there, and we were gonna do a show about fishing this new opportunity. Well, to say things went good would be a minor understatement. You see, we caught so many trout and walleye that we got done too soon. We actually finished in one day what I thought would take several. So we're sitting up there, got time on our hands, and Eric very graciously said, hey, come on up, stay at the main lodge and go out on the big lake and go fishing for walleye and pike. Well, yeah, it took me about 10 seconds to say yes and start packing my gear. We headed out on the big lake the next day and it started out, yeah, fairly normal. But hey, if you know me, yeah, you know, normal doesn't hang around, not in my boat, not for long. Hey, I'm your host, Kyle Randall. This is my Wilderness Journal, and we're going to go out and do some not-so-normal walleye fishing right now. That first morning, I motored us out to a spot I'd fished the previous spring, and within minutes of getting there, we had... A walleye? A walleye? Really? Here? Yeah. Huh. How about that? Oh, cutie. And some pliers? I'll get them. Well, there. It's a nice one. Yeah. Sun coming out, lit that up for you. It's a beautiful day in Canada. And <laughs> Tina's catching walleye. Gee, who knew? <laughs> nice job. Let's put them back. All right. Well, good job. Can you do that again? And I stopped my minnow. How about that? A conservator. <laughs> Nicely done, dear. Thank you. Oh, there's a fish, dear. And right after Tina's fish? Right off this little yeah. bitty island. Obviously, the fish were still here. It acts like it wants to get away. <laughs> Look at here. First morning out here. We've been here. I haven't even finished the last cup of coffee from breakfast, and we're already catching Pretty, isn't it? The sun like that? I tell you, you just don't get a whole lot better than this. This is 
first day, first half hour of fishing. We're already putting walleye in the boat. Nice. Beautiful fish. We'll let this one go back. <laughs> Not sure that was a comment. <laughs> Taste fishy. <laughs> oh, well, let's get some more. And it wasn't just us. Over in the other boat, Dan Fox was tied into what looked like a really good one. There it is. He's got a huge walleye. Good job, buddy. Twenty-five and a half. Got me a walleye. Twenty-five and a half. Nice fish, boss. Thank you. Well, there. That's what you come to Canada for, right? That's the gummy walleye. There you are. That's a good one. Congratulations. Well, that was a really nice walleye. And just an hour into the first day, and being as how Miss T and Dan had a little side wager on who was going to catch the biggest fish on this trip, well, yeah, you know Miss T. Looks and big. Yeah. Keep your rod tip out. And a girl. I just see dark water. Bottom, bottom. Can you hear the music? Bottom, bottom. <laughs> What do you think? What is it? I don't know. I can't walleye. It's a big walleye. Look at you. He's pretty. Yes, he is. Good job. Look at that. Look at him. That is a dandy. Yeah, That's a big old good one. Just a really nice. nice fish. A lucky fish. You know why he's lucky? We have a box lunch. <laughs> <laughs> nice job. Thank you. You gonna do it again? Yeah. T dropped that one back and I looked over and Tim had a fish on. Folks, to say the bite was on, it might have been an understatement. Oh yeah. A Wally, huh? Friends, we weren't an hour into the first morning yet, and everybody already had a fish and missed tea. Well, you get the idea. Don't tell me you got another fish. Is this legal? Look at that, another big walleye. Holy smoke. Oh, well, hook fell out. That wasn't hooked too well. Not too well. <laughs> Hold that up and show it to Tim, would you? Nice job. Thanks. We'll put it back in. All right. Beauty. In the words of our grandson Ian Lily, sweet. <laughs> the morning was going pretty sweet. In fact, we were catching fish with just about every cast. This place is amazing. We'd drop a minnow tip jig down, twitch it a couple of times, and oh, there's a fish, honey. Oh. Yeah, we'd be into another I fish. Don't know. It wasn't always a walleye, but... Whatever it is, is if it's a walleye, it's a, a walleye with an attitude. That's what we come looking for was big fish. I don't know. Staying down just kind of bulldog it. I'm afraid one of those fastback walleye. <laughs> this six pound test probably isn't going to be... If it's a walleye, it's a darn big one, I can tell you. Fish. I don't have much more line on there. This is not, not, not what I planned. Look at that. What do you think of that? Nice. It's not what you want on your six pound test jigging rod though. That's, I'm leaning on him pretty hard right now. You done now? Can I get a shot at you one time? Uh -huh. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> that is not how you want to fish for your trophy pike. However, <laughs> we take it right here. It is Nagami Lodge. You just never know what you're going to get. 
look at that pike. Jigging for pike. <laughs> what do you think, men? Take a guess. 32 and a half. 34 and a half. Tina, how big is that fish? 37. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go catch me a walleye <laughs> or something after I retie. <laughs> those fish are a little hard on your line. And for those of you at home that think I was kidding, <laughs> six pound test, that's it. Woo. Well, get back to fishing. What are you doing? Watching you. All right, okay. get out. <laughs> Well, other than catching that huge pike on six pound test line walleye rod, yeah, not the normal way I fish for him. Things were going really good. You know, we'd caught some tremendous walleye already, some real smokers. And it was just the first morning on the big lake. You know, we decided we'd head in about noon, have some lunch, pick up Eric Lund, our host, and then head back out for an afternoon's fishing. And we were doing just that. In fact, we were probably an hour, an hour and a half away from the lodge when we realized the normal weather we had counted on that afternoon, yeah, it wasn't going to be normal, not for long. By the time we stopped to fish, the wind was already building. Wind's blowing in here really nice. Of course, it wasn't affecting the fishing any. So, uh, I think they're here. <laughs> Uh-oh, now Dan's got another one. There's some fish in here, I think, Tim. I saw Dan catch a fish, so I wanted to, and then I saw Tim catch a fish, so I wanted to. I think this is just about an inch longer than yours. <laughs> I learned that from Eric. Oh, there's one too. oh and now he's got one. Poor Tina's getting busy going around circles. <laughs> yeah. Your battery's just fine too. Well, am I glad I didn't come here? The building wind was making boat control tough, but it wasn't affecting the fish in any. Baby. Really cute. There's still milk on that one's chin. <laughs> cute. Yeah, buddy. I remember it was just about the time Tina caught that fish that the weather finally went from <laughs> bad to worse. Yeah. Eric did the smart thing and tucked into the lee of that little island until the storm passed and then we headed back out across the lake. There was still time for at least one more fish before supper. Nice <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> he hit it as soon as it hit the water. Oh. <laughs> there, nice release. <laughs> Well, now that T had had her, you know, last cast, we finally got to head in for supper. And the following day, Eric and I headed down the river for trout, so Tina took the boys out and played guide for them. And it wasn't long before she had them right back in the fish. So what do you think, 30, 36? <laughs> well, hey, it's your story. I might go uh, 40, 18 on him. 18. Yeah. Right in the middle of Dan landing a fish, Tim actually hooked one up. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, and you're right. Tina is a pretty good guy. Oh, cute. Little uh, lunch fish. That would make a delicious lunch fish. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, he's about 18. Yeah. He definitely had the guys on the fish, and they were definitely doing their part. It was never long before somebody yeah, had another fish. Oh, yeah. That's the kind of fishing you go to Canada for. That's the gummy 
walleye. All right. Well, Miss T obviously had the boys into the walleye on that second day. Eric and I were off trying to do some fly fishing, but she had them in there catching. They had a great time. And I gotta say, that's a good thing, especially when you gotta be off doing something else to have somebody like T to rely on. Unfortunately, with that day gone, it meant, yeah, we were down to our last day. Now, normally, I try to fish a little harder. I do a little more on the last day. I head out and hope somewhere on that big old lake to find a great big fish, you know, to kind of close the show with. Only that day, yeah, that day I never even had to leave the dock. Gotta be a brook. How'd we're, you do that? We're standing out here on the dock. There's the boat. Here's the dock. On a cast out there, just killing time, waiting for Eric to get his stuff put together. Oh my goodness! Oh, isn't he fish. beautiful? Look at that thing. <gasps> They're never gonna believe it. There's nobody here. No <laughs> here. There's the, the, the fish hose, the guide shack. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Look oh at the size God. of that trout. That thing's huge. Isn't he beautiful? We gotta get rid of this. Oh, We're gonna let this go. We're not telling a soul. Oh, come to Esnagami Lodge and catch monster brookies at the dock. <laughs> that brook trout was huge. And I swear, hand to God, I caught it standing right there on the boat dock while everybody was getting their gear into the boat. You know, I was just killing time and waiting. I was throwing out there thinking, you know, maybe I'll catch a walleye for my lunch or something. But I never expected a huge brook trout. And to be honest, yeah, it's not normal to catch big brook trout right off the dock, not even at Esnagami. Still, I didn't have to worry about going out and finding me a big old fish for the last day. I already had one. So, yeah, we went fishing anyway. I ran us out past the lodge and onto the main lake that last day, and we really didn't go that far before I stopped, and yeah, the fish were waiting right there for us. Oh no, 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 just a big walleye. Hey Tim, yes, sir. would you like to hold this rod for me for a minute? I would, but my reach isn't quite <laughs> Let me see if I can skate this big dog over here. There's pretty good walleye right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me see if I can get my hand around this for that boy. Maybe not. Can you get your hand around him? Well, he's got a pretty good belly. Not that long, probably only 23 or 4 or so inches, but he's got a real large, he's kind of like, kind of thick in the middle. <laughs> oh, let me see. One time. What do you think? That'll work. <laughs> There's another 24 or 5 inch walleye right there. Look at that. This past my elbow. Easy 24 inch fish. Beautiful. I'll take them all day long. I'll put that one back, see if Tim can catch it. You gotta love a fish that'll show up and make you look good, don't you? <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> you have no idea what it costs to buy and train those fish. <laughs> It is not cheap, but I think we'll all agree it's well worth it. <laughs> yeah, that's a gooder one. You know where there's another big one, Tim? Right over there. See, it was the last day we decided to stop and have one more shore lunch, and right after Miss T whipped up a meal that I promise you was fit for a king. We decided we'd head back out, you know, for our last afternoon of fishing. The boys headed over to Moose River, and T and I decided we were going to slip into one of the bays on Esnagami to get out of the wind a little bit. And, you know, we decided we'd try to do a little fly fishing for walleye. Now, that's not the normal way to catch them. But, hey, everything else on this trip was going crazy, so I figured, well, what can it hurt? We had intended to fish for walleye with fly gear, like I said, but hey, when you see a 40 plus inch pike just, you know, laying there, you know, what do you do? Well, I'll tell you what you do. If you're me, at least, you try to get him to hit that fly, and if he won't, well, pick up your jig and rod and throw that out there, because you never know what a big old pike will eat. Yeah. <laughs> see? Last 
last day. We're up here fishing the flats. Oh, I saw this fish. Oh, man. No use for me at all. You need my help? Nope. Let's give her one try with the reel here. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> there. Is a 40 inch pike. Oh, nice. Man. Holy canasta. <sighs> Just over 40. Oh, about almost 42. Easy, 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 big boy. Boy, and this fish is thick. Look at him. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to let you go. Oh, look at that. Nice. That is a beautiful fish. Isn't he gorgeous? That is the way to cap off it. You can see he's a little scrubbed up from spawning. She, this fish will weigh another 15 pounds by this fall. But uh, I'm here to tell you, be it fly fishing or casting, this is what it's about. You want to come to Canada and get one of them. That is an honest to goodness monster. I certainly want to thank you again and dear for not only the, the great trip, but for 32 years, it's our anniversary. We have a habit of doing this on our anniversary. <laughs> you notice that? Mm -hmm. That is gorgeous. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, honey. And thank you, Eric and Sue Lund, all the guys and gals, everybody at Esnagami Lodge for another great, great trip. There she goes. And that, folks, on the last day, is just as good as it gets. A 42 inch pike on a walleye jig on the last afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> not exactly normal. But then neither were any of the other huge pike we caught walleye fishing or the tremendous trout I got right off the boat dock. Yeah, there was very little about this trip that was normal. And friends, if you know me, you know I love walleye fishing anywhere, everywhere. I just think that walleye fishing up at Esnagami Lodge, yeah, it's a bit more memorable. Thirty-seven. Close enough. <laughs> Twenty-five and a half. They're never going to believe it. What is there left to say except thank you? Thank you to Eric and Sue Lund. Thanks to every single person up at Esnagami Lodge. Everybody there does so much to make those trips so great. That's one of the reasons we keep going back. And while I'm handing out thanks, thanks Dan Fox and Tim Somerville for going along and sharing it. And certainly a huge thanks to my bride, Miss T, not only for that great trip, but for 32 years of sharing great memories with me. We had such a good time. And while it may not seem like that trip was normal, for us, honestly, we expect to take great people, go to great places, and have a great time. And we usually catch great fish, so in a way, yeah, it kind of is the norm. Hey, you know, I hope we see some of you up there doing just that. I hope you're wetting the line up there at Esnagami Lodge and cranking in. <laughs> Who knows what you're going to catch, but whatever it is, we're going to stop and certainly share a story, then a cup and a fire. And if we don't see you up there, friends, well, at the very least, I hope to see each and every one of you here on next week's Wilderness Journal. Thanks again, Eric, everybody at the Lodge, and Tina, happy anniversary, dear.
Vigo Valley Outfitters. Hunting or fishing, archery or firearm, boots, bullets, or bait casters. You can get it all at Eagle Valley Outfitters, M13 and Worth Road, Pinconning. And by Diamond Buck All Weather Camo. If you had a blind built with Diamond Buck Camo, you'd be waterproof, windproof, bug proof, and scent control. So ask yourself, where are you going to sit this season? That's Diamond Buck All Weather Camo. And by Hopkins Trophy Whitetails in Sears, Michigan. <laughs>